Hey, welcome back. Today we're going into the JEPI ETF, which is the JP Morgan Chase equity premium income uh, wrapped into an ETF. But first, what's the hype about it? If you clicked on this video, you're obviously either one, an owner of JEPI, or two, you're looking to buy JEPI as a potential covered call dividend income strategy, or you like the underlying securities that are in it, which are mostly technology stocks. If I move over here, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define what JEPI is. We're gonna look at the hype. We're gonna analyze the reality. And then I'm gonna give you my expert opinion and prediction on what someone, potentially you, would look like if you purchased JEPI or what the traditional investor would look like. Now, first off, I'm gonna move over here straight to the JP Morgan page and it shows you very quickly, JP Morgan equity index, uh, equity premium income seeks to deliver monthly distribution income and equity market exposure. What does that mean? Just make it simple. It means that one, they're investing in underlying securities, which are primarily tech focused. Two, they're looking to beat uh, what are uh, potential treasury bonds. They're looking to, to beat the S&P 500. And three, they're using what are called generally called covered calls in order to, to uh, produce monthly and quarterly uh, excess income. The two managers of this portfolio, I don't know them. I've never seen them before I did some research on it, but they have about 60 years of experience and they've got a defensive equity portfolio, which deploys a time-tested fundamental research pro program and they want to uh, write out of the money S&P 500 index calls. Uh, the results provide an attractive 12 month dividend yield of 9.82. Uh, we'll see not quite 9.82 since its inception in 2020 and competitively priced with an expense ratio uh, of 0.35. Now, the other the attractive yields you get from this versus other options. So, if you've got a 10-year bond, you've got a global REIT, uh, the high US high yield 8.9 and JEPI is 7.9. At least that's what they're they're advertising. Real quick on the right here from a fund perspective. Again, I'm going to link this down below for anyone who wants to look at it. The net asset value $54 a share. Uh, let's see here, year to date, and this as this as it being recorded on December 9th, as of December 8th, which is a Friday, it's up 7.9%, and they've got about 30 billion uh, in assets there with 133 holdings. If I move over into uh, JEPI here, I can see uh, from the beginning of the year, it's down about uh, 15 basis points. Now you might be saying, well, why don't I just put my money into a high yield savings account at five, five and a half, uh, you know, and leave it there. You obviously could. And I do have money in there that I like to keep just for an emergency that's earning me five and a half percent. But, but you know, people have have, uh, have been uh, around the internet have been asking yourself, okay, so if I can just do that, why invest in JEPI? Well, the hype some of, uh, around some of this is you've got a dividend producing uh, ETF, you've got a fairly low expense ratio, and they're writing covered calls to add to your portfolio at the end of every month when those options expire. I'm actually gonna move over into, we're gonna look at a graph here very quickly uh, of what, are, what a covered call strategy looks like. Now, I'm not gonna go into everything of what a covered call strategy looks like, but I think this chart does a great job. So first off, if I look here, you'll see we can take the, uh, we can take the strike price, which, down, which is a dollar amount, Pretend these here are just dollar amounts. So we've got, we got everything from uh, $0 all the way over to 17 and a half. And then the profit over here, again, uh, this can be a dollar as well. And you've got high down to low. If I look at something like JEPI and you see the strike price here, 10, this is, uh, this is where, the, where the, the price they're saying we could bid up or bid down. So if the stock goes down, uh, you're still making money on calls. However, once it gets, I'm sorry, once it gets here and we start, it starts to go north, uh, you could potentially start losing some unrealized gains. So when I go to sell a call, which I'm selling calls on the underlying op, or an underlying strategy here, which is JEPI, uh, once it gets to this uh, 12 and a half here, this 12 to 12 and a half dollars per share, I may have to start unloading. So I may have to uh, let someone buy the stock here at 12 and a half even though it's it's at uh you know could be 17 dollars so i'm gonna make some money when i sell the calls underneath i may lose money here uh which would be bad as the stock continues to rise so it does two things one it provides you 
Uh, it provides you a income stream, whether the stock goes up or down because you're writing calls and people are buying them. However, just be careful that you understand that if the stock were to go over a certain, uh, a certain dollar amount, in this case right here, you could potentially start losing money. All right, I'm gonna go back over into the fact sheet here of, Je of Jeppy. So we've talked about what the uh, fund looks to do. It looks to generate, if I move over here, let me move my pad just a second. If I move over here, it looks to generate income through a combination of selling options and investing in large cap stocks. Well, what are those large cap stocks it's talking about? I move down here, I can see the top 10 holdings for Jeppy are, as you might think, uh, let me, make sure this is highlighted. So we've got Amazon, we've got Microsoft, we've got uh, Adobe, United, MasterCard, Visa, Accenture, and Intuit. And we can see the percentages here. So these are percentage holdings. So 1.7% of the entire portfolio is coming from Amazon, Microsoft. Now Microsoft has a great dividend. Uh, if you're just, if you own Microsoft outside of an ETF, you're gonna notice that you're getting your quarterly dividends. It's just been an absolute uh, it's, it's just been on a tear. Now, if I go back and look here, I'm gonna look at some of the sectors. If you're very, if you're okay with being tech focused here from a sector perspective, I believe tech, yeah, tech's the biggest, uh, 13 and a half. And then if I go down here, we've got consumer staples. And if I go down here to portfolio analysis, Uh, at the top, it was 12%. It's headed back down and your yield on cost has continued to rise.